we have the amazing, we have an amazing special guest. And listen, I don't even want to wait any longer because I just need to see her beautiful face on this screen. So can we please bring in the beautiful Joy? Yes, ma'am. Hi, we can't hear you. You on mute. There's literally a train passing by right now. I just heard it. Oh, yeah. I heard it. For a second. I heard it. Oh, yeah. good. Hello, hello. Oh my God. You're so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. You all too. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I always get so excited when another female, you know, enjoys, <laughs> you know, all of this male testosterone. Me too. You gotta balance it too, out. Yes, yes. So again, thank you so very much for joining us. I know you were supposed to came last Monday, but something came up and we weren't able to bring you on. So we yes. truly appreciate you accommodating us and coming on this Monday. So for those people, because there are some people, I say this all the time, there's some people that's been under the rock. For those people that may have been under the rock, if you could just tell us a little bit about who you are and, um, you know, everything about Miss Joy Hutton. Well, I don't know if we have all, all, all night for everything, but, <laughs> but I am Joy M. Hutton. I'm originally from Chicago, and I live in Houston. I've been here, it'll be 10 years in August, which is crazy. And I am a serial entrepreneur. And most recently, I was on season three of Ready to Love. And yeah, I love helping entrepreneurs and have a dog named Gigi. Uh, she's a Yorkie <laughs> Coon. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's just a, a little summary. I'm sure we'll get into more stuff. But yeah, of course. What breed is your dog? How big? She's six and a half pounds. Well, she might be a little more than that. She gained a little COVID weight. Chihuahua? <laughs> a, a, a Yorkie, Yorkie poo. Yorkie, okay. Yes. Don't don't judge. That sound a little judgy. No. <laughs> they little pit, they look, we call, I call them little pit bulls. <laughs> I have a Yorkie, and that's why he calls them little pit because they are so. Yes, precise. they are. <laughs> She's very spicy. Don't don't push her. I like. I like. <laughs> I like you said, uh, serial entrepreneur. That's the first yes. time I ever heard that term. Okay. Really. That's the first yes. time I ever heard that term. Maybe I've, maybe I've been under a rock or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she does a lot and does it all. So yes. you yeah, from so Chicago to, um, to Houston. So how did that come about? Was that for business or family or how did you end up? I just it? needed a change. It was yeah. time. It was time to go. I, I mean, I grew up in Chicago. I left Chicago to go to school in Maine and then came back to Chicago. So it was time for a change. No, I totally understand that. That was basically what Trump was just talking about earlier, that yeah. <laughs> he's, at the, <laughs> he's at the point where he's ready for change. Yeah, I'm, I'm, exactly. Sometimes a different a change of scenery can do wonders for you, you know? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Might be time for me to leave Houston too. So <laughs> <laughs> she like, I'm still ready for more change. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about the show. I don't want to, um, you know, because you have so much that's going on. Um, shout out to Noni, uh, one of our listeners. She said, "Me too, Joy, serial entrepreneur." Yeah, yeah so shout it. out to her. Um, so to talk about the show, because like I said, I don't want to go too much into that because you have so many other things that you got going on and that you're doing. How did you end up on the show? I mean, like, I have to say, I watched the show. My daughter and I, we would do pillow talk. I mean, we wouldn't be in the bed. You know, you know the pillow talk that they have after the shows? Or yeah, whatever. yeah. Um, like let's let's unpack this. Yes, and we would unpack it, and we would sit there, and we would talk. We would pause it, so we would because we didn't want to talk over. So we pause it, and we would talk. And she's like, "Oh, I know this. Do you think this is gonna happen? This is what's gonna happen." So we watched it from the beginning to the end. And yeah. you are our favorite. Aw, thank you. I mean, we loved you. And the, and the one thing that I can say that I loved about you is because I've watched a lot of reality shows. One thing that I can say that I loved about you is you never ever steered away from your classiness and your grace. Wow. I mean, you were, you walked in beautiful, you held your head high and you remained that 
Yeah, she was, she was, um, so Noni says she was me and my husband's favorite person. Yes, you literally remained that humble, that classy, you know, even through all that was going on. Yeah. So here's the question. Yeah. How did you get on the show? Mm -hmm. And then in that environment with all that was going on, how did you remain joy, you know, and not feel like you had to succumb to everything that was going on around you? Right. So for your first question, I had gotten several text messages from friends when they were casting in Houston. And I was like, I'm not going on a dating show like this is ridiculous. So stop sending me this. And then I started getting contacted by casting producers. And I was like, OK, so I guess this is a real show because I had never watched Ready to Love. And so I ended up talking to a casting producer. I was like, okay, well, it's on own. It, I guess it's legit. I see Nephew Tommy's involved. Talked to a casting producer. And then um, she really convinced me that, you know, this was one of the more tasteful dating shows. So I was like, okay, let me go through the process and, and see if it's a good fit. So I made it as a finalist and yeah, then I <laughs> went on the show. And because of the pandemic, you know, it was supposed to be filmed in Houston, but they flew us to Atlanta. We were at a resort outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And yeah, that was like summer camp. So as far as, you know, going on TV and managing to be yourself, you know, one of the things I just always had in the back of my mind is one, I have a mother and father and I have a name I'm and I'm a businesswoman first before going on, on a reality show and I'm going to rep represent myself with integrity. And I had to think about that, my, my future, I don't have any children. So, you know, but one day I hope to have children if, if they ever <laughs> see anything about this show, they're going to, they're going to be proud that their mother was well behaved. Um, so, you know, that was the biggest thing for me. Like I, and also too, just because the camera is on you, you don't have to change who you are. I was always just, I mean, like you said, I was consistent and that's just me in real life. And it's just so crazy because people were just surprised. They were like, oh, <laughs> like she's a real person on reality TV. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, what are you supposed to be? But I think that people transform into things that they're not because whether they feel pressure by the cameras or pressure by producers to do something, you know, and the other thing mm. too is what you don't want people to know, you don't say. Yes. I went through some things in my life that there are not, that are not for public consumption. And so what I don't want people to know, I certainly wouldn't air that stuff out on TV. That's true. So, so the producers, they, they try to put you in a trick bag every once in a while. Oh yeah, they tried to push everybody's buttons. You gotta get some drama. You know, you gotta you gotta get some drama. And people were saying they were baited into doing certain things. You know, I was asked to ask certain questions, and I was like, yeah, no, not doing that. You know, so um, you you make a decision. At the end of the day, you control your own narrative, and so you know they can make you look a certain way with editing, but they can only you know you can only squeeze so much out of a lemon if you you know if you don't give them if you don't give them that ammunition that's true that's true Tell them <laughs> so yeah i you know i just went on there and i said i'm gonna be me and you know once i got used to you know eight nine cameras being in my face i was like okay i can do this <laughs> so you were so did you make a connection yeah i made a connection on the show but uh oh, okay. we are no right. longer a thing <laughs> so you 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 mentioned that y'all were filming this doing right in the middle of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. How did that work with 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 the testing? Did y'all you all have to go through rigorous testing daily, or uh, you know quarantine? How did that all fit in? Because yeah, it seemed like a lot of extra, you know, during the pandemic, and then you know mm -hmm. being safe. Yeah, we were constantly tested while we were on set. And even before we got to Atlanta, they made us do a COVID test. Um, we did a COVID test once we got there. We quarantined for four or five days and then we were tested twice again. So, yeah, we and then we were tested throughout filming. So, yeah, it was it was not a game. Good. Well, that's good because, I mean, it definitely makes you feel comfortable doing it in that type of environment. Right. Um, so we did have one of our listener had a question and she wanted to know, were the connections real? I mean, so, you know, because it's a reality show, um, yeah. you know, were there were these real connections or were some of these kind of like forced like, oh, you guys look good together. We're going to put you two together. 
Yeah, you know, I can't speak for everyone else. I can only speak for myself. And I think for, for me, I did make real connections. Right. And, you know, at the end of the day, like we're still real people. We're yeah. real people with real emotions, whether you made a real connection or not. Like we're real people and we were in a stressful environment. And so some people buckle under pressure. Some people, you know, are able to withstand it. But it the show was an the the show was an unscripted dating show so um mm -hmm. you know a lot of reality tv shows are scripted but ready to love is actually an unscripted show so whatever is coming out of your mouth is coming out of your mouth wow. now how they edit it is another thing because there were right. certain times where i looked at the editing and i was like i wore that outfit five days before this, <laughs> even, this scene even aired so why are they going back to this show? but you know, they put certain things in there to make it fit that, that particular scenario. But I, I I, personally did. You know, I made myself vulnerable. I was open. You know, one of the reasons why I decided to do the show in the first place, because I was like, I'm a divorcee. Mm -hmm. And it has been a few years since I, I have been divorced. And we're in a pandemic. Who are yes. we out here meeting during a pandemic? So I can yes. meet 10 men. And they've been COVID tested. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, it was the perfect opportunity. Right. I was like, I'm not meeting ten men in 2020, so okay. might as well. <laughs> not in, not in, in person. So I was like, why not? Why not do that? <laughs> Definitely true. Definitely true. Yeah. We gotta. Um... Okay, so. Um, one of our listeners also wanted to know, what do you think about the nighttime rendezvous? The, <laughs> the nighttime rendezvous. You know, at the end of the day, we're grown, right? I can't monitor right. grown folks and th that's their business. You yeah. know, I, I think that all darkness comes to light, uh, right. whether it happened in the current moment or later. But I think that with, with me, I understood the process. And so yes. if something happened, between two other people and maybe someone that I was interested in, what can I do about that? We're grown. We make we make adult decisions. And so that, you know, you decide how you want to handle that situation moving forward. So I honestly, I was like, okay, you know, this is what it is. And and, and I guess in that same light, you handle it with you handle it with so much grace and was so classy. I was just like, oh my God, I'm so in love with this. I was in love with her. Like, and your style. I just have to say, oh my God, I love style. I love fashion. And you were fierce with Thank every you. single outfit. I was just like, oh my God, look what she got on today. Like, how can she just be this flag? Or you just I'm serious. I am Thank a you. fan. But let me ask you, what is um, one of the biggest things that you feel that you took away from the show? What is the biggest thing that you feel that you grew that you took away from being a part of the show? You know, I would say being vulnerable. You know, you when you're putting yourself out there, just with dating in general, you're making yourself vulnerable. But I opened myself up, my, my entire life up to being on TV. And so making myself vulnerable, which is not something that comes easy for me, and just being open to the process of dating again and seeing what can happen. Um, I had no expectations when I went into that process. So I think the biggest thing for me is like, okay, you, you can do this vulnerability thing again and, and not being upset about the outcomes, you know, just growing from those outcomes is the biggest thing for me. Cause you know, it's a part of life, right? You know, things are not going to always work out the way you want them to. And I mean, I'm a, I'm a living testament of that. That's true. Dating is, uh, so, dating, go ahead, Sterling. I'm, dating nah, is, I was just saying, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really, it really is. It's like at, at this age, it's, it's kind of like it's. it's di I'm gonna tell you how different it is. It's it's different in the sense that we might be alone by ourselves forever. <laughs> That's right. how different it is. Man. It's crazy yeah, it is, yeah. You don't know who to trust. You can't. Man, it's just crazy. You go out but, on a date. Why is was, it that way? You right. know why? Because of social media. Because of complicated dating now. <laughs> I I think, yeah, that's that's a that's a good question. Dating Joyce. when you go on a date now, it feels it don't feel like a date. It feel like an interview. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know. Yeah. 
people come with a 21 questions. I'm like, is this, what is this? You know? and, and usually they already, after they've had the dinner, they've already sized you up to know whether you yes. be a great wife, a great mother and all this. And no. this is the first date. Can we, uh, hello, I just had a date. Yeah. <laughs> you held, you held right. your fork this way or you, you uh, <laughs> Drink, put your cup up this way. I'm like, it's too much, and it's you like one little enough. thing that bothers a person, and they they automatically want to go on to the next person. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. that's why. That's, that's why everybody gonna be by themselves because everybody you can't have everybody. It's just crazy. But yeah, my question I, just, to you I is, think people have too many options. You know, exactly. I think that exactly. you know because people are dating more open now to dating outside their race which i do not discriminate but people are also there's the age gap you know men are dating younger and younger and outside of their race and the we're we're out or yeah we're outnumbered or men are outnumbered in terms of the women the, yeah. the ratio of women to men so men have more choices yeah. um so i think that you know it's it, it just I just think people overcomplicate things and I think what men don't understand is there are women who want what you want sometimes I think that there's so where many are they? Which, <laughs> listen where <laughs> are you come out, come out wherever you are but it just, it's, it's to, about having that conversation what'd you say Sterling I said they, they scared to be the first one to come out and just tell you how they feel put it on the tape but I also think men think that they will that, that they need to tell us what we think they want to hear or what they think we want to hear. You yeah. know, yeah, I'm looking. You know, I want to marry you. I see you in my future. No, you don't, because I don't see you in mine. So you don't have to. <laughs> right. Do I'm not gonna lie to you. Right. Don't tell me no girl. I don't, I don't need yeah. to hear that. <laughs> you know, or, yeah. or they're like women always want to be in a relationship. Yeah. I am That's very good. strategic in terms of if I want to be in a relationship or not. I'm not going to jump into a relationship. I'm too old for yeah. a boyfriend. Yes, that, I'm wrong. Even you. even marriage. Yeah, I mean they yeah. always like to think that it's supposed to be marriage. It's supposed to be this. Exactly. Everything is is not the same across the board. I, I totally exactly. agree with you on that. No, so hold on, hold on. She said she, you're too grown for a boyfriend. So so you yeah. you're a man. I got you. I want I got a man. You. I want a See life a partner. <laughs> you and I have to do this girlfriend, boyfriend. If we're sure, talking to me at this stage, I think people should just be more intentional, whether you just an intent intentionally want to be a, a you know, free spirit, whether you intentionally want a life partner, whether you want a friend, whatever, just be honest, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and before we go on, because I really want to I really want to talk to you about the I, I've seen you by on all the things you're doing. Yes. Before we get to that, though, I want to get your question on this, okay? Yes. How do you feel, me personally, how do you feel about male and female friends? Now, let me let me say this. <laughs> like, 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 that, like the friend zone type of thing. I'm too old, okay? <laughs> I'm going to tell you how old I am. I'm 43. Mm -hmm. I'm too old to be having friends, female friends. If, like, if we hanging out, we spending time together, damn it, we dating. <laughs> okay, we, we, we ain't, we ain't brothers and sisters, <laughs> right? We ain't brothers and sisters, or you my hand, you my home. No, it ain't none of that. Girl. I'm too old for that. I got my my boys. Those are my hangout partners, not you. How do you feel about about that? Dynamic? Okay, but if you feel that way about a so called friend, that she's not really a friend. You want something more with her. But friends are friends, and there's a space for those people. So I I have male friends, and I have no romantic interest in them. Now, granted, I have friends who have later expressed a romantic interest, and I'm like, listen, we can't, no, because that's gonna ruin the friendship. But I believe that I. I, I believe you can have platonic friendships, but again, that goes back to that expectation conversation. What are we doing? Are we just going to be friends? Because especially if there's a woman that you're hanging out with and she knows you like her and she's friend zoning you. Yeah, that's you can tell right then that she ain't got no plans for you. So with exactly. me at my age, goodbye. Exactly. But I do believe you can have friends at this age. But also there are, you know, I saw someone say friendships evolve. Yeah, they absolutely do. And actually in a relationship, I want a foundation for yeah. friendship because yeah. you resolve things completely different with your mate when you are friends with them. Yeah. When you go to that, I don't like you phase, you know, you still oh. love someone as a friend. 
But yeah. if I just don't like you and there's yeah. no basis of friendship, then it's nothing left. That's so true. you, you resolve conflict true. differently when you have a foundation for friendship. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that um, that is necessary. And so, yeah. you know, and I think there's a difference when you date too. So say for instance, you meet someone and it feels very transactional, like you were saying earlier, all the questions and someone sizing you up. Whereas when it's organic and you just automatically go into a flow with that person, like, I just want to talk to you. I want to tell you everything. That's the foundation for friendship. Whereas, you know, when you're dating just to be dating and it's very transactional, it's very different. And so you can tell, you can just tell in terms of the flow when you meet people, whether this is going to be a foundation for friendship or we're just dating it's just very surface level because right. if you don't want to talk about the ugly stuff then i i can't do this with you that's oh true. yeah that's true yeah. Yeah. Uh, would you do another reality show not for dating i would do something business related but not not for dating that's it's too stressful <laughs> you know what, that's funny that's funny because we don't have a lot if any business related business, reality yeah. show. Nah, right. You know, you know. I like it. See? I think the closest we came to it. You're giving up <laughs> ideas on here. I think the closest <laughs> we came to it was the show that was actually hosted by the ex-president. Uh, mm. That was probably the closest yeah. business mm -hmm. reality show we've ever had. So that yeah. is really missing. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So let me ask you, Joy. I mean, you went on a dating show mm -hmm. and you know, this show was on own network, so everyone was able to see it. So I'm sure it opened up a whole new <laughs> world of men that are now absolutely men and women that are probably obsessed with joy. How do you go on now to even, you know, want to still, you know, find love or be in a, a relationship? Because you know, now you have to really be particular about, does this person really want to get to know me or is this person mm -hmm. going to know me because they've seen joy on the show? You know, do they, it, it, are they intentional about wanting to get to know me or they're seeing that, hey, this is, this is someone who is a celebrity. So how, how yeah. have you been able to navigate that whole new um, opening of your network that you have received since you've been on the show? Prayer and discernment. <laughs> <laughs> I pray the demons away out of my inbox, out of my DMs. Okay? Woo, I bet they are on fire. <laughs> You know, it is so interesting. And what's I think I have more women obsessed with me than the men. I think the men are scared, you know. Right. And so they know you guys are correct. <laughs> it's so crazy. And I, I mean, I get women asking about clothes and hair and this and that. So I think the women, you know, are more so messaging me about that. And I'll get men every once in a while. Not, but you would think it would be a lot, but no, it has right. not been a whole lot. And then the ones that that do, I'm just like, yeah, that. <laughs> Keep it moving. Well, if, <laughs> Not even if really. one thing came out of, I said, if one thing came out of, I'm sure you probably got um some 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 dark and lovely some hair. Some somebody reached out to you. They want <laughs> they want to I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting yeah. for that. Yeah. Contact me. You know, yeah. I'm like, where are the that where is, are the endorsements? You got endorsement with all that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was doing yeah. so, but I have not. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting how do for you these sleep? partnerships. You said, how do I sleep? <laughs> I have a sleeping? I have a big ass bonnet. I put I twist my hair up at night and then I put my my big bonnet on. It's real sexy. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you still gonna be real sexy, lady. I'm sorry. This is what it is. I see. Yes, yes. <laughs> So listen, okay, so you have, you you maneuver through uh, Ready to Love, you, you, you moved past your fears of that, you did it, you made it, now, what's been going on? What was, what, what's happened after you finished doing uh, Ready to Love? What was, what was your next move after that? Yeah, so I, I actually, I had left the show a little early because yes. we were filming, um, my sister passed unexpectedly, yes. so okay. I left you know thank you i left you know the chaos of the show and then went into the chaos of a family tragedy so i never really had an opportunity to be compressed yeah. from everything leaving a show leaving a bubble and then my introduction into the real world is dealing with the family tragedy so 
it has taken me a while to kind of find some ground, you know, get myself mm -hmm. grounded again. And even still, it's, it, I'm not completely there, but I'm at a place where I can talk without, you know, um, breaking down all the time. But, you know, that was, that was a lot. That was a lot for me to deal with. And, um, you know, so really I've just been, you know, consuming myself with work and, that's it. Working on my two businesses. I have a consulting firm. I've been uh, running that for five years. And so I like to say that we manage the chaos of people and processes um, through organizational development. And then I have a beauty startup, which is like Uber for beauty. Oh. So it's a platform that delivers beauty services to both men and women in the comfort of their home, hotel, or office. Uh, so right now we're we're based in Houston uh, and we're launching in Dallas next month, or no, March, at the end of this month. <laughs> so, yeah. So what, is, so what is that, what all entails in that? Cause that's interesting. So, yeah, so you can have someone come give you a haircut, um, you know, for men, they can do facial grooming, manis and petties. So yeah, hair, makeup, and nail services. Wow. Mm -hmm. So how, how's your, yeah, of course, I know you probably have plans to expand. Yes. Later on. Come on to D.C. We yeah, uh, D.C. is, I've been getting a lot of requests from yeah, D.C. So, yes, D.C. is on the list. <laughs> yeah, you definitely got to come to D.C. Oh, my God. You yes. definitely I'm DC, but you're you have a um, do you have a podcast? Is it a podcast? Yeah, yeah, I have a podcast as well with one of my best friends, Lydia. And so, yeah, we do our podcast every Thursday, so it's called Beauty Ish Radio. And we just have a good time, we cut up, we cut up so bad. So, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's so interesting because from being on the show, you know, people see me one way, yeah, and then when they see me kind of turn up a little bit, they're like. <laughs> What's happening? And I'm like, guys, I'm a whole human. Like, I'm a, I'm a little right. sophisticated. You know? I saw you rap. Okay, I saw you rap. Right, right. right. I got bars. bars. You know what I'm saying? So you I'm like, you have yeah, bars, bars. bars. But oh see, they want to put me in the first lady box, and I'm like, but I'm not. Oh a my person. god, the first hold lady up. box. Hold on. Where, like, what, what time on Thursday, and where can they listen to watch? Yes, yeah, so Thursday, um, at 10 a.m. Central, we. So we're normally on Facebook Live, but we're going to be tra transitioning to YouTube Live. But we're on all things podcast and um, old episodes of the podcast can be found on YouTube under Beauty Ish Radio. Oh, yeah. We, nice. yeah. We, 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 nice. my, that's my, that's my, and we, we have, we do the talk. Miss so we want to do the <laughs> We need a bar, though, since you brought it up. No, no. Mm -mm. Exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> I had enough Monday to drink night. Water tonight. <laughs> Exclusive. Give me I'm a bottle. water tonight. There you go. Okay. She, she's drinking what we call water. It's called okay. virgin vodka. Mm -hmm. That's what water is called. That's what no, I no, no, no. Water, water is, is good. So when it's she on her show, she got that other liquid in it, and then the bars start coming out. Exactly. I That's how she keeps that beautiful skin and hair. It's so essential. It's so essential. Yes, <laughs> well, speaking, yes, speaking of drink, exactly. you know, I'm, I'm wearing off courses because you said drink, and that is my night as well. So what is your favorite drink? Are you going out with your girls, and what's your favorite Yeah. Drink? I'm a wine and whiskey girl. Ooh. So I like my whiskey bourbon, and I love wine. Ooh. What's your yeah. favorite wine? My favorite, <laughs> my favorite wine is Pinotage, and it is a red blend from South Africa. Wait, now it's Pinot. I've never heard of that. Me neither. No, Pinotage. Pinotage, P-I-N-O-T-A-G-E, and it is amazing. I'm gonna have to try that out. Yeah, I've never Pinot Grigio is the only thing I've heard of. <laughs> Pinot Noir, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I like right. a good Pinot Noir from New Zealand. How are you managing or like what's your whole thoughts with the uh, the fact that um, Texas or Houston or Texas period is supposed to be like really opening up? Mm -mm. Like, are you uh, are you like, OK, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm out there. Or are you like, no, no, I'm like, no. I'm wearing my mask. And you know, it makes me not even want to go out even more because people are already reckless down here. So as of March 10th, they're just gonna, they're probably going to lose their minds. But what I appreciate is there are businesses that are taking a stand and saying, no, you still have to wear your mask when you come yeah. up. Here. You know, because yeah. it's a safety issue for their employees. And yeah. I, I just think, but you know, they don't care about us. Government doesn't care about yeah. us. 
we were out we without we power and water for a week. So yeah, yeah. that was crazy. And y'all, and y'all pretty much was told, "Hey, do your own things. Learn how to survive. Yeah. You can do it." Right. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah, I got to right. now. I got Fortunately, I'm in school in Maine, so yeah. I know how to survive. Yeah. So with, with your business, I know with your business, you still you still gonna require a mask and and and. Oh mask. yeah, absolutely. We are not doing that. Mm-hmm. No, that's here to stay. Yeah, I definitely don't blame yeah, it. Do you have any away. type of um? Because I know you're like in the industry, like you said, you're a serial entrepreneur. Um, are you working on anything beyond what you're doing now and that you're just kind of like in the works that people can look forward to? You know, I have some things in the works, but you know. You want to bring that exclusive? Can we? We can't get an exclusive. Well, I already told you guys I'm uh, launching on the Go Glam in Dallas, so that's an exclusive because I haven't put that out there yet. You heard it here first. Yes, you heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. We love exclusives. Yes. So yeah, DC is on the list, but yeah. Is that gonna be like a, a app? Or is it so right now it's a web based platform, but we are okay. launching an app in the near future. Nice. Yeah. I love it. My thing is being a serial entrepreneur. Now I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not eating cereal with it, but I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> and I don't have much time. So <laughs> how do you how you gonna find a man when you ain't got no time for a man, baby? You make time for the things that you want. What you want? What you value? What you value? For I love it. I am busy, but I will make time for my man. I mean, I I think that's important. Yeah. And you find the right man, and he's gonna be right there with you. He's gonna be like, "Baby, listen, what you need me do? I need an opportunity. Blah blah blah." He's gonna support the movement. So he exactly. I want to ask you, how did you feel about um? February 4, 2020, Joy M. Hutton Day. How, how did that make you feel? That was exciting. I that can was so imagine. Exciting. Yeah, so I was recognized for my leadership and entrepreneurship uh, by the city of Houston. And so that was really exciting. So actually this year on February 4th, I launched a micro grant fund for female entrepreneurs so they can get a little pocket change, you know, if they go to leadhershipfund.com and apply. So that's something I wanted to do to give back in honor of that day. I love that. That is so beautiful. And I know that the community and giving back is really important to you. It is. Um, And you've been doing for a very long time. So (laughs) is there something that you have been in the works or that you want to do with everything that people went through with the whole, um, you know, when you guys didn't have power and all of that? Or is there anything else beyond that that you have in the works when it comes, you know, comes to giving back to the community? Yeah, I would say my biggest thing right now is the leadership fund that I created. So, people, you know, women can apply to that. And there's always different things that I'm doing. I'm working with Google. And so I'm a Google digital coach for Houston. So I offer free digital training to entrepreneurs. And I mean, those are tools that they can or skills they can learn for free using Google tools. So I do those workshops every month um, and they can go to g.co forward slash digital coach h o u and sign up for those free workshops and right now it's virtual because of the pandemic but i mean it's free free skills that can help you scale your business online so i definitely encourage anyone who's an aspiring or existing entrepreneur to take advantage of those free classes and they get to see me yeah they get to see your beautiful face (laughs) i want to um before, I, before we end, I want to ask you, this is, uh, I don't, is today International Women's Day or was that the other it day? Is. It, today is. Is. it okay. is. So for it's all the young people. ladies out there, I have a daughter, she's 19 now, so she's old. But for all, the, <laughs> for all <laughs> the, um, the other, for the young ladies out there looking to come up and they're looking up to you because you're doing so many things and they've seen you on TV now and now they're, they're following you and they're following everything you do. For, do you have any advice to any young ladies who are looking up to you and trying to get into business and entrepreneurship? What advice would you give to them? Or what advice would you give to a young Joy Hutton way back now that you have the knowledge you have? 
Great question. Yeah, you know, I would say do not let anybody tell you what you can't, should, should not do, you know, won't do. You know, I had a lot of people along my journey just tell me what I couldn't do. And I, the power of no is real. And so I'm like, no, you're not going to tell me what I can't do. I'm going to do it all, you know? And so not, I'm, I've always been a rebel in the workplace, which is why I'm an entrepreneur today. And I don't deal well with people trying to put me in the box, um, put me in a box. And so I would say, you know, your purpose drives your success you know you hear a passion to profit which there is some truth to that right because people think oh if i do what I, what i love i'm not going to make any money but if you're passionate about it it will come you have to put in the work and so i remember someone told me a long time ago work your plan and plan your work don't just start a business without having a plan in place you know people get into business and yeah it's completely chaotic and then yeah. they're in trouble later. So I, I just think having a plan first and talking to the right people. And sometimes you don't know who to talk to, but you know, the power of Google is real. So use it and then try to find mentors that can help you along the way. Don't be afraid to ask for help. That that no. pride is not gonna get you anywhere. Right. No, I told that you is so that. true. Mm. So it's true. definitely it's definitely true it's definitely true mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. again i just totally commend you like i said we my mm -hmm. daughter and i watched the show and there's so many people that when they found out that we had you coming on the show was like mm -hmm. oh my god i love her she was my favorite yes, and i mean it's just your energy and and your energy literally flows even through this interview it is oh, thank social you. media mm -hmm. on reality tv or whatever it truly flows and i mean it's so beautiful to to be in the same presence of another beautiful energy as yourself. Yes, I truly want to thank you um, thank for coming on to our show this evening. For yes. sharing your story, uh, Rip Monday Night sends you so much love and so much light, and we wish you so much blessings. We need yes. some exclusive, all the good stuff you got going on. Exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. No. exclusive. And when you make your way to DC, let us know because we're going to be there to support. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. But before you get off, please let everyone know how they can follow you, support the movement, everything else that you want to plug, anything else that you want to put out there before you leave us tonight. Yeah, I would say definitely support us on Beauty Ish Radio. Go ahead over to YouTube and subscribe. And we're on All Things Podcasts. We're on iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon, Audible. Um, Apple, Google, anywhere you can find a podcast, we're probably on there. And it's really, it's really a fun show. We just, you know, tell it like it is. And my uh, friend Lydia, she is a riot. So <laughs> the public will definitely love her. She was actually my friend that was on the show that came. Oh yeah, but, yeah. yes, okay. Yeah, so she came and grilled, grilled Jay, and sat down with us at lunch that day. <laughs> and then, you know, yeah, you can follow me at joy underscore m underscore h, and yeah, let me know. Know what you guys want to hear see whatever um you know i you know i i am a civil servant you know first even though my friends get on me for giving away so much for free but i believe that that will all come back to me and it okay. has and yeah. so i don't you know, I ain't gonna give everything away for free. You know, you all right, well, yeah, you gotta make some money. You got some bills to pay. Right. You gotta pay that invoice. Bills got to pay. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pay that invoice. But I do believe in giving back truly because people have poured into me along the way. And so, yeah. yeah. Next time I'm in DC, I'm definitely gonna look you all up. I, I used to spend a lot of time in DC when my sister lived there. So definitely love DC. Oh Come yeah, on. and whenever you have anything else that's going on, or when yeah. once you launch and everything, then we would love to have you back so you can talk about that and everything. Absolutely. You know, your mm. family now. So uh, thank you. I've enjoyed you all so much, and thanks so much for having me on. I'm going to watch. I'm going to look at the show, and <laughs> I'm going to review her bar drops. Okay, oh, I'm going to get my personal she review. She got bars. 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 Thank you so much. 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 Th